point guard with the best handle you ever saw. God, Sam God. Sam God. Without question. <laughs> God, Sam God. I've never seen anybody with handles like this. His impact on today, I think a lot of these kids owe him a couple of dinners. God, Sham God type handle is an elite handle. It's one of the best handles that's ever touched a basketball. Today's NBA is the golden age of the point guard. And in every arsenal is a weapon that most elite ball handlers utilize. A crossover move created by God, Sham God. You can't handle the scandal of an uptown vandal. Chewing up your toes, make a sandal. Somebody told me that you're old, but can't nobody hold me. I threw my dirt off on my lawn. If I had to describe it, I would say it's different. You know, a lot of times you see a crossover with side to side. The ball handler always had control of the ball, but with the sham guy, it's almost like you're exposing the ball more than usual. It's almost like the breaking case of emergency crossover. That move is like very, very dangerous to me because if you use it in the right situation, it could be one of those like game-changing moves where you just hit somebody with the sham god and then the crowd will go crazy. Do you see him pull the ball back away? That's nasty. That last one you had, I think that's what the kids call a sham god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that, was, that was pretty. Yeah, I tried it. It worked. <laughs> Known simply as the sham god, the crossover dribble is modern art in motion, used on countless hardwoods all over the world. I usually use it when I know the person can't guard me, because it's, it's easy to, like, you know he's going to reach for, he's going to reach for the, the throw out, and then when you snatch it, it's just going to look crazy. I've definitely caught a few people on a sham god or two. I remember one in Seattle at the Seattle Pro Arena with Jamal Crawford. I hit the big with one, and I finished with my left hand. I like the craze behind the god sham god, but I, I like the, I like the actual combination of move that could possibly lead to a sham god. So if you hit somebody with a combination, then you hit him with a sham god move. I feel like I get more excitement out of that. One, two. Brooklyn born, Harlem raised, God Sham God grew up on the playgrounds of New York City in the 1980s. At an early age, his future handles were inspired by a legend. I was in elementary school, and Tiny Archibald was my gym teacher. And he always told me one thing. He was like, as long as you learn how to dribble, you'll always be worth it to a team. I used to use one pound ankle weights and put it on my wrist. And then after that, everything else is just like creativity and just reaction. When I first seen him play in the park, not even organized, I knew this kid had some special handle because his arms are so long, and when he crosses, it's almost a roll. So for you to try and even steal it from him, when he's crossing over in his groove or whatever the case may be, you're gonna hurt your fingers because your fingers are gonna be on the ground. A lot of people can dribble the ball, but very few can control the ball. He would put the ball out in front of you and he had this remarkable crossover. It was like mind boggling, you know, how quick it was. Ball looks like it's on a screen with Sam My coach, Bill Abra, he asked me what I wanted to be in four years, and I told him I wanted to be McDonald's All-American. The passes that he could make off the pick and roll were pinpoint. We did a lot of pick and roll, you know, with him and Ron Artest. Shamgar flourished at LaSalle Academy, earning an invitation to the McDonald's All-American game in 1995. The roster included seven future NBA All-Stars. Greatest handle since the Messiah. Those hands, Vince Carter and Paul Pierce and Sharif Abdurrahim and all these guys, and everybody was talking about the Sham God move. Following the McDonald's All American game, Sham God met another future NBA star, Lower Marion High School prospect Kobe Bryant. The chance encounter led to an important realization. I was like, man, who is this kid? Like, he's a nut. He's just shooting the ball all the time. To everybody that was at the camp, it was like, man, this guy think he's Michael Jordan. His father was like, can you work with him on his dribbling? And the one thing I enhanced with him is just told him to dribble lower, start high, come low. Change of direction by Brian. 
That was the first time of me teaching somebody something. And I guess that's the, kind of the path I've been on, like, my whole life. Shamgar went on to play at Providence, where in 1997, he led the Friars to the Elite Eight. And the Friars are on fire, thanks to Sham's divine guidance. In their regional final matchup against Arizona, Shamgar's famous move was seen nationwide. It was a play where I was on the right wing, act like I was going baseline, and I threw the ball out, and I ran like five steps and pulled it back with my left hand. The NCAA tournament for me is like a sweet and sour story because it was the worst thing and the best thing that ever happened to me. Because up until that point, I haven't thought about the NBA. I entered the draft, then I got drafted by the Wizards. Looking back, I probably would have did it a little bit differently. If he had stayed one more year, he would have definitely been a first round choice and maybe a lottery pick, you know. Unfortunately, he did. When I came to the NBA, you had Shaq, you had Kim Olajuwon, you had all these great centers. Then the NBA was more of a system. But now when you look at 2017, they want the point guard to be the scorer, the leader. I was caught in between the times. I always tease my moms like, man, you know, you had me 20 years too early. NCAA was like my coming out party, and I don't really feel I capitalized the most from it. And I think one more year would have been suffice, and the story would probably be a little bit different now. Shamgar played just one NBA season, so he took his career and made his patented handles global. We make our own sense, and you're qualified. And when I went to China, my first year, I got MVP. And then my second year, I got MVP with Yao Ming, and I was voted the most popular player over there. After a nearly decade-long career overseas, Shamgar returned to Providence in 2012, this time as a coach. Four years later, he was hired by the Dallas Mavericks as an assistant, where every game he witnesses the impact he's had on today's league. I just think it opens up the game because there's so many combinations you can do off the move. The move itself is so wicked. It's wicked. It's, it's identifiable. You know it's his as soon as you see it. Oh, it's the God Shem guy. And I've seen people and other players over the years try to imitate it, but nobody can make it look like he does. Only losers go to school. It's a different way of, of crossover, you know, it's its own thing. You know, that's why everybody knows what it is, because it was so different. It wasn't like a behind the back or between the legs or just a right to left or left to right. It was just um, sort of a flashy, different play. The appeal behind it and the uh, craze behind the God Sham God is awesome, man. That, uh, that move is, has definitely been tailored, you know, over the years, and you see different guys using it for, for different finishes. Game point. Oh, he brings out the sham. Oh, you, you can't do that. You cannot do that to another grown man. De La Fuente just got clowned on out here in Amsterdam. Artistic-wise, is really dope because not even just an artist, as a former basketball player, when you get a defensive person momentum going to my left, let's say you're right all the way, and you know you're not about to go that way, it's like, this boy, he's about to be a smoothie. It's incredible now, looking back on it, because we come from an area, Sham include them, our area is filled with so much hate. We come from that generation in that neighborhood to where they didn't necessarily appreciate what Sham was doing. He has a move that will outlive him. You know, that move will be around forever. You know, everybody comes up uh, trying to do that move or that particular style is stealing something from him. I just think now I'm getting the notoriety that, that I didn't get that much when I was younger for putting in all the work, and I just 
feel this is the basketball gods repaying me. Yo, Mac, I don't even understand how they didn't understand you and that Mary Joy. Yeah, I Kick know. Kick that man. old robotic, futuristic George Jetson. Yeah, crazy well, you Joy. Down, ah, Just ah, like ah, you the blab, robotic kicking flab, or flavor bit of batter, chin a chatter, madder than the mad hat. I bet you my shit come by flatter. I got the data to turn your body into antimatter. And just like a piece of sizzling, you'll fit inside my stomach with the eggs and grits between. Take them down, Mac. The king is what I mean. I mean, my man, get a cup and put some change inside your hand. Take it down, Now Mac. hold up. Let's make this official. Make it Everybody, let's agree that MCs need a tissue. Wake them up. The folks, my only issue. I bet your mama miss you, and I bet the Mac take off like an MX missile. No more of your whining on the charts climbing as I make the funk kicking out my heart of an anonymous. And if you didn't know who's rhyming. I guess I'm gonna say Craig Mack with perfect timing. You won't be around next year. My rap's too severe, kicking my flavor in your head. Here comes the 